Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in the wake of his father's funeral. Yamamoto Kenji, known as Ken, finds himself consumed by grief and anger. His father's death, a result of a drug overdose, weighs heavily on Ken, fueling his disdain for the destructive nature of drug dealing. Determined to steer clear of this path, he brushes off the well-intentioned words of a police officer, opting instead to walk away. Joined by his two close friends after the somber ceremony, his emotions are raw as they make their way through the streets. It's during this journey he stumbles upon a drug transaction in progress. Fueled by rage at the sight, he approaches the dealer under the guise of a buyer. Initially met with resistance, his mention of his father's name shifts the dealer's stance. Seizing the moment, he lashes out, swiftly overpowering the dealer, snatching the bag of drugs, and fleeing the scene with a rush of adrenaline. Reaching the dock with his friends, they open the bag to find not just drugs, but also a stash of money. Temptation hangs heavy in the air, as Ken's companions eye the drugs with curiosity. Unwilling to let them fall prey to the same fate that claimed his father, Ken makes a decisive move. With determination, he hurls the bag into the churning sea, severing the ties to this destructive world once and for all. Following the chaotic events at the restaurant, they find themselves thrust into an even darker world. The next day, Yakuza members arrive at Ken's doorstep, ushering him to their headquarters. There, amidst the imposing figures of Shibasaki, Nakamura, and their entourage, Ken is offered an unexpected proposition, to join their ranks. Uncomfortable with the idea and the dangerous atmosphere, Ken declines, though Shibasaki leaves him with a business card, a subtle invitation lingering in the air. On his way home, Ken's world spirals further into chaos, as his friend urgently warns him about pursuing drug dealers. Without hesitation, he flees, only to find himself pursued by a relentless group of men in suits. Outnumbered and cornered, he puts up a valiant fight, but eventually succumbs to unconsciousness. When he awakens, he finds himself in the clutches of Kato, the leader of the drug dealers. To his horror, he sees his friends also held captive, battered and bruised. Kato, cold and remorseless, reveals himself as the catalyst for Ken's father's demise. In a cruel twist, Kato orders his men to torture Ken and his friends, demanding to know the whereabouts of the drugs they seized. Beaten and desperate, Ken finally admits to discarding the drugs into the sea, near the pier. Seizing upon this information, Kato forces Ken and his friends onto a boat, intent on retrieving their lost stash. As the boat cuts through the dark waters, Kato's men ransack and seize whatever belongings the trio possesses, leaving them utterly at the mercy of this ruthless drug lord. A turn of fate brings Ken into an unexpected predicament, when one of Kato's underlings discovers a business card belonging to the Yakuza leader. Despite Ken's protests of ignorance, Kato sees an opportunity for ransom, and contacts Shibasaki, demanding payment for Ken's release. Reluctantly, Shibasaki pays the ransom, and Ken finds himself once again in the Yakuza headquarters. Given the offer to join their ranks once more, he is at a crossroads. Overwhelmed with emotion, he breaks down in tears, ultimately accepting the Yakuza's proposition. In the years that follow, he undergoes a profound transformation, becoming the most feared member of the Yakuza. On a night of celebration for Nakamura's birthday, Ken presents him with a lavish watch as a gift. The group toasts to the occasion, reveling in their camaraderie. The next day, during a leisurely game of golf by the riverside, Shibasaki advises Ken to seek a life partner, warning him against a solitary existence. In evening, Ken visits a bar owned by a fellow Yakuza member, only to encounter a former tormentor from his days of captivity. The man offers him a proposition, leave their territory in the southern region, and in return, he will receive a share of the drug profits. Infuriated by the suggestion, Ken lashes out, leaving the man bloodied and warning of impending conflict. Seeking solace, Ken drinks with a woman named Yuka, and his Yakuza companions. Moved by his injured hand, Yuka removes a shard of glass, prompting memories of Shibasaki's advice to find companionship. As they leave, one of Ken's men discreetly passes his address to the madam, to give to Yuka, revealing Ken's interest in her. Shortly after, Yuka visits Ken's home. Clarifying that she was sent by the madam to meet him, not as a paid companion, Ken apologizes and drives her home. Arriving at her doorstep, he asks for her phone number, signaling a potential start to a new chapter in his life, one marked by companionship, and perhaps a departure from the solitary dangerous world he has inhabited for so long. The aftermath of Ken's confrontation with the drug dealer gang takes a dangerous turn. Nakamura confronts Ken at the Yakuza headquarters, questioning his violent actions. He explains he couldn't tolerate the insult hurled at their Yakuza group, a sentiment that finds support from Shibasaki. In an attempt to make amends, 
Shibasaki approaches Kato, the leader of the drug dealer gang, to apologize for Ken's actions. However, Kato's response is far from conciliatory, he expels the Yakuza from the southern territory. Enraged by this disrespect, the Yakuza leader retaliates splashing Kato with a glass of water, a symbolic gesture of defiance. The next day, Shibasaki invites Ken on a fishing trip by car. During the journey, Ken opens up about his first love Yuka, to Shibasaki's understanding. It becomes evident Shibasaki has already sensed Ken's feelings, noting the rare joy on his face. As they converse, their peaceful drive is shattered by a sudden attack. A motorcycle assailant opens fire on their car, fatally wounding Ken's friend who was driving, and injuring Ken. After the somber funeral for the driver, a police officer approaches Shibasaki, proposing that law enforcement take charge of the case, to protect the Yakuza members and their families. Visiting Ken in the hospital, Shibasaki urges him to let the police handle the situation, and avoid further retaliation. However, his resolve is unyielding. Disregarding Shibasaki's plea, he vows to seek his own form of justice for his fallen friend. Driven by a relentless desire for justice, Ken springs into action under the cover of night, to hunt down the drug dealer gang responsible. Seeking guidance, he heads to a bar owned by a Yakuza acquaintance, where the bar owner provides him with a gun, and a lead on the dealer's location. Just as he prepares to confront the target, Nakamura unexpectedly appears and takes matters into his own hands, swiftly dispatching the man with a stab. Surprised by Nakamura's sudden intervention, Ken is taken aback. In the aftermath, Nakamura urges Ken to eliminate the gang's leader, but Ken refuses, determined to face the consequences of his actions alone. Instead, he asks Nakamura to protect their Yakuza leader, whom Ken considers a father figure. Reluctantly agreeing to Ken's plea, they swiftly leave the scene, leaving behind a seething drug dealer gang. Fleeing to the safety of Yuka's home, Ken finds a moment of solace in her arms, yet his request for intimacy lingers in the air. As morning breaks, she awakens to find him gone, but discovers a substantial sum of money left behind for her. Her world shatters when she turns on the television, the shocking revelation that Ken is the perpetrator behind the drug dealer gang's demise. Subsequently, Ken faces arrest, marking the beginning of a new era for the Yakuza. The government enforces stringent regulations, revoking Yakuza licenses and dismantling the gangs. Many former members are forced to abandon their criminal ties, with those remaining unable to conduct business legally. Fourteen years later, Ken emerges from prison, greeted by Nakamura. Together, they make their way to the rundown and deserted Yakuza headquarters. Welcomed by Shibasaki, Ken is offered a cell phone, a contraband item in the new order of Yakuza life. Initially hesitant, he eventually accepts the phone, realizing the stark changes brought upon the Yakuza by the government's stringent regulations. As he adjusts to this new reality, he contemplates the uncertain future that lies ahead, knowing that the once powerful Yakuza world he knew has been forever altered. Ken is welcomed back into the fold of the Yakuza with a celebration of his freedom. Curious about the drastic changes within the Yakuza world, and the mass exodus of its members, Ken learns that life became intolerably difficult for the organization after his incarceration. Despite feeling guilt-ridden, his comrades reassure him that the circumstances were beyond his control. Seeking solace, Ken visits Aiko's restaurant, where he reunites with Reiji, a former comrade in arms. Over dinner, Reiji shares that he's now married with a child, having chosen to leave the Yakuza life behind, to work in a factory. However, when a mysterious message pulls Reiji away, Ken is left with a sense of foreboding. Aiko, noticing Ken's distress, attempts to comfort him. Soon, Tsubasa, Aiko's son arrives. Surprised by Tsubasa's maturity, Ken takes him for a stroll around the city, catching up on lost time. During their conversation, Tsubasa reveals he now works as an illegal goods seller, partnered with none other than Nakamura in the drug trade. Shocked by this revelation, Ken resolves to confront Nakamura. Before doing so, he inquires about Yuka, only to discover that Tsubasa doesn't know her. Tsubasa offers to help locate her, and shares the tragic story of his father, Kimura, a Yakuza member killed by drug dealers. After spending the night conversing, they return home, each grappling with their own demons. Ken, driven by a sense of justice and longing, eventually tracks down Yuka's workplace. Patiently waiting outside until her shift ends, they reunite after 14 long years, finding solace in each other's company at the beach. Returning to her home, he is surprised when she hands back the money he left behind, insisting she never used it. Shocked by her rejection and desperate for a chance to make amends, he chases after her, seeking forgiveness. Yuka, burdened by the truth of her 14-year-old daughter's existence, tearfully bids him farewell, 
leaving Ken devastated and regretful. Determined to change his life's course, he seeks counsel from Shibasaki, who is recuperating in the hospital. Shibasaki advises him to leave the Yakuza behind, urging him to embrace a new beginning while he still can. Moved by the words, Ken ventures to reconcile with Yuka and her daughter. Miraculously, they accept him into their life, and he embarks on a new journey of normalcy, working as a factory laborer alongside Reiji. During a break, a poignant moment unfolds as Ken and Reiji, reunited after 14 years, reminisce over their challenges as former Yakuza members. A fellow worker captures the moment in a photo, which, against Reiji's wishes, is uploaded to social media, quickly going viral. The repercussions are swift and severe. Ken Reiji Yuka and her daughter face backlash, leading to Ken and Reiji's expulsion from the factory, Yuka's dismissal from her job, and her daughter's expulsion from school. Enraged by the betrayal, Reiji confronts the man responsible, sparking a violent altercation. Meanwhile, Tsubasa, now embroiled in Kato's illicit activities, grapples with his desire for revenge, upon learning of his father's fate. As evening falls, Kato convenes a meeting with the police, unaware that Tsubasa and his cohorts are planning an attack. Aware of the impending danger, Ken arrives first, and swiftly eliminates Kato and the police in a brutal confrontation. When Tsubasa arrives, he is met with a scene of carnage, and realizes that Ken is the mastermind behind the bloodshed. With emotions running high and fates intertwined, Ken's actions set in motion a series of events, that forever alter the lives of those involved, culminating in a violent and tragic showdown between the remnants of the Yakuza world, and those seeking justice and redemption. At the dock, Ken tries to calm himself down. Suddenly, Reiji arrives and stabs him, believing Ken caused his own bad luck. Ken apologizes, but Reiji continues to stab him, until Ken falls into the water and dies. Later, Tsubasa comes to the dock with flowers to honor Ken. Ken's daughter also arrives to remember her father. She asks Tsubasa if he knew her dad, and he shares memories of him. Seeking revenge can lead to serious consequences, better to avoid criminal actions and find other ways to deal with problems. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.